Hello students, welcome to this session on limits. We are going to continue with the different techniques of finding limits. Till now we've covered the direct substitution method and we've also covered the factorization method. This is the third method that we are going to discuss now. It's the rationalizing technique. So sometimes we have some functions which are difficult to factorize. So we can't use the factorization method there. If you try direct substitution here, see what happens. So try direct substitution, okay? Put x equal to 0 everywhere. If we do that, we get 0 plus 1 here minus 1 upon 0. This is going to be 1 minus 1 upon 0. This is going to be 0 upon 0. What we get is an indeterminate form. So we are stuck again. Again we are getting an indeterminate form. So we can clearly see that direct substitution is not working here. Let's try the factorization method. Look at this function and tell me if you would be able to factorize it. Basically there is only one factor x in the denominator. Can I somehow get x in the numerator? All the techniques of factorization that we know of are not going to help us here. What do we do then? That's where this new technique called the rationalizing technique comes into picture. As the name suggests, we are going to rationalize either the numerator or the denominator depending on the question. Now, in this question, we have a function, let's say f of x. This is our function, f of x. And we can see that the numerator needs rationalizing, okay, because there is a square root sign in the numerator. Let's try rationalizing f of x and see what we are getting. We have to multiply the numerator with its conjugate. We have to multiply the numerator with its conjugate, which is this and if you are multiplying something in the numerator we must multiply the same thing the same quantity in the denominator also so that's how we all rationalize right okay if you look at the numerator now let's call this a this entire thing is a a minus 1 into a plus 1 do you recall any identity a minus b multiplied by a plus b, what's that? That's a square minus b square. So that means x plus 1, this is our a, this minus b square, which is 1 square. And in the denominator, we are going to have x into x plus 1 plus 1. So square of square root of x plus 1 simply gives me x plus 1. And then we have minus 1 there. In the denominator, we have the same thing, x into this x plus 1 plus 1. Now, plus 1 minus 1 gets cancelled. So, this can be written as x upon x into root x plus 1 plus 1. x and x in the numerator and denominator get cancelled. We are left with 1 upon under root x plus 1 plus 1. What we have done till now is we have reduced this function f of x into this form. Okay, we have reduced this into this. Now we have to put the limit. Let's put the limit. So what we have is we have simplified this f of x into something uh, where we can use direct substitution. So this question can now be written as limit x tending 0. So 1 upon x plus 1 plus 1. Now you, you use direct substitution. Okay. We get 1 upon 0 plus 1, that's under root, plus 1. This is 1 upon 2. So, the limit is 1 upon 2. 
once again let's revise this technique first we try direct substitution but we saw that we were getting an indeterminate form we saw that factorization is also not working because I'm not able to factorize the numerator anyway. So then came this third technique. We saw there is a square root sign in the numerator and plus or minus something. So we know what is the conjugate of this term and we multiplied it with its conjugate and used an identity to simplify this function. We were able to simplify this function to something like this. And here, again, we tried direct substitution. We got the final answer. Let's verify our answer using graphs. This method we have learned earlier when we were given some graphs and we found out the limit. Uh, first, we found out the left-hand limit, then we found out the right-hand limit, and finally, we were able to agree on the value of the limit of that function. If we plot this function, this is the graph we get. And as x approaches 0, once from the left hand side and then from the right hand side, the value of y approaches a certain value you all can see. So the value of y is approaching this or the value of f of x is approaching this point. This point is actually 1 upon 2 because this is 0, this is half, this is 1, this is 1 by 2. That's what we found out using the rationalizing method as well.